Welcome to the Landscape Photography Vlogcast, hosted by myself, Tom Peters, aka the Photo Ninja, all the way up north, Paul Thompson Photography. It's truth, mate, it's Matt Bishop. We cover all things photography and chat to some of the best photography minds in the business. Put your feet up and kettle on, and let's jump straight into this week's Vlogcast. Proudly sponsored by Case Filters. Capture with confidence. Right, how how we doing, guys? Welcome back. It's been, yeah. it's been two months for me. Actually, I missed the you last. Did. one. It's been you a good did. while. Yeah, you, you did. did. You missed the last. Thanks one. for coming yeah, back, yeah. mate. We yeah. thought you disappeared forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we thought we'd lost you. That was no, no, no. The kids are in bed now, oh, so I just thought I'd awesome. come back. <laughs> <laughs> what a disaster! Eh? Oh. No, it was a bit. Yeah, yeah. it was a bit. Yeah, but yeah we're all good. good. No, we're all macked up. So it's good to have you back, mate. It's good to have you back. And it's good to have someone else with us tonight, isn't it? Who, who's with us tonight? Yeah. Done. I don't, because I don't know this guy um, too well. You're going to have to introduce him. <laughs> uh, so this month we've got Sean Bagshaw. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks you for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> what time is it over there? It is, uh, what is it, a little after two in the afternoon. Ah, uh, so you're fresh. <laughs> yeah, I'm still fresh. Yeah, you guys are into the into the midnight oil here for mm. almost <laughs> nine nine o'clock on your your side. Yeah. Nine o'clock. Yeah, I'm Matt ten. is yeah. ten. Yeah. So you you yeah, guys yeah. are on the well, you guys yeah. on the whiskey. I'm on my um digestive tea after my big pasta dinner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've it's got like fennel and it. elderflower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm drinking out of my Patagonia cup, so it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, and then, yeah. Sean. No, well, by by that time of night, I'm I'm cooked. I'm I'm old, not like you guys, so I can't even make it. <laughs> well, I can tell you what, mate. You're in the so. webcam. You're looking a lot, lot younger than us. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness for webcams. <laughs> you haven't got that skin uh, smoothing on, have you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> so people out there who have no idea who Sean Bagshaw is, um, actually, I think we should just say that tonight on our podcast, this is the first um, person we've had on the podcast from North America. So that's, yeah, um, yeah it is. Is yeah, that right? Yeah. 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 yeah, it is. yeah, so yeah, yeah. You guys have Adam Gibbs on. Yeah, yeah, but he's he kind lives of- in North America, right? There's yeah, only like- natural born. Yeah, 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 <laughs> naturally, yeah, yeah, natural, yeah. natural born. Oh, because yeah. we've had it. Handley on too, haven't we? But Adam Handley's not naturally born either, so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, well, he's, um, he's he is. The UK there you as go. Well, so, uh. it's, all, it's all these, it's, it's, it's all these poms that move over to, um, to North America, isn't it? Yeah, they stuff things up, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's refreshing. <laughs> Sean, do you want to introduce yourself a bit, mate, for people who have no idea who you are? Sure. sure. Yeah, I'm Sean Bagshaw, a landscape and travel f- photographer. I live in Southern Oregon, Ashland, Oregon. And let's see, I've been doing it a long time. Um, I started doing photography in the late eighties, early nineties, just as uh, something to document mm-hmm. adventures. It was purely mm-hmm. documentary photography at that time. It was not good photography at all. I was doing a lot of like rock climbing, mountaineering, trekking, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And I basically just wanted to take some photos so I could um, brag to my friends <laughs> or I don't know, corner, <laughs> corner my family yeah. in a dark room with a projector and make them watch slides, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I did that for a lot of years, and then um, over time, I uh, I kind of enjoyed, even though I just had a little this film camera, a little one button point and shoot Olympus mm-hmm. something, you know, just could mm-hmm. hold onto the rock and hold it out and just click and go. But uh, out of I don't know a few hundred photos, there might be one that kind of resonated with people, or I liked more than the others, and that got me thinking. Like, okay, so why, you know, why are some photos more enjoyable or more interesting to mm-hmm. look at than others? Yeah. And if there are things that you can do to kind of up that ratio, more than one out of a few hundred, uh, <laughs> gets more interesting photos more often. How would you go about doing that? So that got me into studying photography a little bit and upgrading cameras. And then eventually when digital came along, went straight, straight to digital. Cause that just mm. made sense to me. 
And then at some point thought, well, I'm spending so much time on photography. Maybe I should try to do it as my job, um, which was probably not a smart <laughs> choice. But when you're not, yeah, yeah, I made the same decision. So. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you, you get it. Um, yeah. But I went for it and somehow it worked out. Wow. And here I am. Wow. Fantastic. Fantastic. So photo cascadia then this this whole photo cascadia thing how did you get involved with that and and basically what's it all about yeah photo cascadia is uh we call we call it the team the photo cascadia team but that's more kind of tongue in cheek uh it's maybe it's a collective or just a it's a, it's a pretty loose group maybe kind of like you guys i don't know yeah. uh but we're all northwest based pacific northwest based photographers and we're all people that were kind of really into photography when digital was coming on the scene. So kind of early to mid two thousands. Mm. And at that time, this would be pre, um, you know, pre social media, pre Facebook, pre, even pre Flickr. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all of that. So pre MySpace, even there was a, a website, which still <laughs> exists actually now called um, mm. naturephotographers.net. Yeah. Yep, Photographers yep, yep, now that well. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. So, um, David Kingham and Jennifer Renwick bought that website a few years ago and totally upgraded it to mm. current standards, but it was an old previously, it was an old kind of forum, uh, bulletin board sort of website, mm -hmm. but that was really one of the only places to share images on the internet back then. And so all of us were very active in that mm. online community. Uh, sharing photos, learning, teaching each other, uh, kind of all coming up together. So that group, Adrian Klein in the Photo Cascadia group had the idea, hey, what if we, you know, we all seem to kind of get along together. We have similar sensibilities. We enjoy mm. each other's company. Um, do you guys want to just kind of do a, a group, a consortium, yeah. a collective? And he put it out. And um, at that time, six of us uh, were in the group. And did it, the six of us, for several years. And then at some point, we became aware of uh, Aaron Bobnick's photography. And she yeah. kind of yeah. became aware of us. And we became aware of her. And we communicated. And uh, eventually, we ended up inviting her to be mm -hmm. part of the group as well. And so now there's seven of us. And that's Photo Cascadia. We, we just a group of photographers who enjoy each other's company and... Um, so yeah, we have you enjoy each other's company. You get in yeah, the pub yeah. and have a beer, or do you, do you organise excursions to get together? You go and scout new locations, or what sort of it, what does it what does it involve? Photo Cascadia. I mean, um, yeah. So I wish that we could all just go mm. down to the pub. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> we're all kind of spread out over the West right. Coast. Um, two of us are in Washington State. Uh, let's see, three of us are in no four of us are in Oregon, but all different parts of Oregon. Yeah. Um, and then Aaron splits her time between California and Slovenia yeah. in Europe. Mm. So none of us are really in quick pub distance from each other, but, <laughs> um, but we do communicate on a daily basis or not daily weekly basis. Uh, sometimes daily, we have a, you know, an online yep. chat that we do and we do team up um, in kind of, twos, twos and threes doing workshops, but we also sometimes just go on personal trips together. Um, we end up teaching together at a lot of different places, conferences mm. and things like that. We, um, three, three of us were just teaching at the out of Oregon conference yep. a mm. couple of weeks ago, which was yeah, great. That fun. Yeah, that looked yeah. fun. It looked good. And then we collaborated on projects, you know, like, uh, books, calendars, um, uh, our images have been licensed for a bunch of a variety of different things. I think we've done, you know, the, the usual stuff where photos go puzzles. And um, I think some phone companies have used our images for phone mm. screens mm. and yeah, mm. that kind cool. of stuff. Isn't, isn't it really amazing cool. though, when you, when you, as a group of photographers, I'm sure it's like this with, with any hobby really, that when you sort of formulate this collaboration, this group together, like you, you grow so much more, don't you? Because you feed each other. You feed off mm. each other all the time. You know, it's um, yeah. You, you, especially when you're in a sort of a learning phase. I remember I, talking to the guys about this. It would have been God twenty more than twenty years ago now when I very first got my first camera, and I was with a group of friends and we all went and bought a reflex camera together in in London, 
and we and we all went down to the the Jurassic Coast and all went photographing together. We just bought our cameras, and um, you know, we all bought, went out and bought Fuji Valve. Yeah, we did the research beforehand and everything. We oh, Fuji Valve is the best film, and and all this, and we went out shooting together and just being away for a weekend as a group. You just you grew so quickly, you matured so quickly because you're just able to feed off each other and all your errors, all those errors that you would normally just do on your own, you were doing together as a group. And um, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's it's a great thing to do Definitely. together, isn't it? Really, because we're always learning, aren't we? Uh, I mean, as, as long you know, as le- much as we like to say, "Oh, I'm a professional landscape photographer," it doesn't matter. You're always going to learn, and you're always going to make mistakes. Yeah, of mm. course. Mm. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. I think anyone, and it doesn't have to be formalized, you know, like a podcast or a, mm. a photo team or whatever, but just to have a, a group of people who enjoy photography that you can do exactly what you said with is mm. really valuable to find that that mm. that social group. Um, and yeah, for Photo Cascadia, we've said many times over the years, you know, we we each have our own photography businesses that we do independently mm. of each other. Mm. And Photo Cascadia itself technically isn't even a business. It's mm. just an idea. <laughs> um, yeah. And we do these projects, but we've talked about, you know, for whatever reason, Photo Cascadia was never a thing anymore. But the group of us would probably still keep doing what we do anyway in the background because of all those things you said, Matt. And um, yeah, we're, we've just become really good friends. We've, you know, come up through photography together. We've helped each other out in various ways and we just really enjoy it. Um, we enjoy each other's company and we always have people we can bounce ideas off of or tell someone in the group, yeah, that's crap. Don't mm. do that. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff, so. Yeah, well, it's exactly the same thing as we've been kind of advocating lately, isn't it, really? We've been kind of saying the same thing in a lot of our videos and a lot of the, you know, when we've been chatting and what have you, is advocating doing things together in a group. Mm. Because, mm. I mean, landscape photography has its name for kind of being a lone, lone mm. guns kind of thing. And we've been kind of saying, well, it doesn't have to be that. I mean, it can be that, but it doesn't have to be that. If you want to get involved in a group of people, it, it's good to do that for all those reasons. Precisely. Yeah. I think that's one of the, I mean, photography is such a great activity because it's really accessible to pretty much anyone at any age and any interest. And it is something that you can do by yourself, completely solitary, if that's the experience Mm -hmm. that you're looking for, but it can also be, you know, a, a social thing that you can, that brings people together. So the fact that it has so many different ways to, uh, to be involved with it. Uh, I just, it's, it's just a great lifelong mm. thing to be able to do. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Mm. So the, the business side of things then, Sean, how <laughs> I'm interested about this cause I've recently, I've only, I've only been self self-employed in photography for the, for the last year. Um, how are you actually making it work for yourself as a business in photography, albeit hard? <laughs> <laughs> selling drugs, selling drugs. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah you got me uh well, first of all c- congrats paul I've, I've kind of been following uh your your prog- uh, progress progression over the last year or two um i think i first got to know about paul through uh adam gibbs when you were yeah, making yeah. Some, some appearances on on his uh youtube channel yeah yeah and, and then i've got to kind of follow um, Matt and Tom, kind of just following the breadcrumbs through that. But yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, good on you guys. Uh, good on everybody who tries this because it's challenging. Um, yeah, for landscape photography particularly, there's, I mean, really these days, no one's hiring a landscape photographer. That's not a job yeah. that exists out there that you could yeah. look mm-hmm. in the want ads and, you know, and. Uh, yeah your application for you basically have to create the position yourself mm-hmm. and then and then what does that look like um you know when i got into this i i thought oh i'm gonna do like all photographers do and make my living selling <laughs> photographs <Yeah>. and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. and, and, and that is a part of it and i do know people who have who 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 do make their living selling their photographs but that's yeah. you know that's a really tough mm-hmm. thing to do and you have to have the right skill set um mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So, so uh, for me, when I started, I just did anything that involved a camera. I said, I just yeah. need to make an income first and then I'll figure out the other stuff later. So, you know, I photographed people, portraits, weddings. I, I photographed people's pets. I photographed furniture, real estate. Uh, I did magazine assignments, you know, just anything that somebody said, hey, we'll, we'll give you a couple bucks yeah. if you have a camera. I said, yeah, OK, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then as that time went on, I kind of established somewhat of a very minimal, meager income. I was a school teacher before I was a, um, a photographer and I taught school and I gave myself I had when I quit teaching, I had some savings and a very um generous and understanding <laughs> wife. That's probably the most important part of everything, isn't it, really? <laughs> yeah. 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 A good partner for sure. A uh, partner who, who, who is, will yeah. indulge you <laughs> and be yeah. patient. Um, yeah. But so, so basically I had five years um, to make back my teacher salary, which is a pretty low bar because in the United States, teachers, especially in the, in the early, you know, 20 years ago, didn't make a lot of money. So I thought, mm. boy, if I, if I can't make back my teacher salary in five years, then I really have no business <laughs> being a photographer, I guess. And, um, but after right at the five year mark, it was like, I was getting ready to go back to teaching. Yeah. Um, and right at the five year mark, I finally made back my teacher salary, you know, equaled that and was able to keep going. And then since then, I've really been able to shift towards the photography that I'm interested in. Um, once I kind of had some revenue streams, I've been able to shift them towards landscape and travel photography, which is, I think, all of us, that's our interest. Yeah. Um, obviously on this <laughs> podcast. Yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> uh, it's, yeah. Anyway, uh, but... Then at some point, though, and I never expected this, the the teaching aspect came in. Um, I started teaching photography, uh, leading, you know, teaching workshops and classes and then leading mm -hmm. tours and then eventually even creating video courses and mm -hmm. had no idea that that would be the place where I was going to make. I mean, I thought I'd done my teaching and I was done with teaching. <laughs> and yeah, then yeah. after about, I don't know, it was probably six or eight years into my photography journey. I kind of looped back and folded the teaching in with my photography. And that's been my main source of income for, uh, yeah, probably about mm, over, mm. over a decade yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, can, I can remember, Sean, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's one thing just like, okay, thanks for coming <laughs> along today. We really appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man, but, um, uh, t to be here tonight. And I mean, to think that sort of when I, um, I had a very slow progression into into digital photography, and I started with 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 um with film camera, and then I waited years and years and years till I thought that that the digital was good enough to step in. And when I did, um, you know, obviously you start looking at post production, don't you? Because you got no idea what it is, and mm. that's when your right. face appeared. So to be actually here today, <laughs> you know, tw 10, 12 years later. And um and to be chatting with you about it's incredible because for me you're one of the um how could you how could you say um I kind of I, I I tend to ref, refer photography and music I think they're very very similar a lot of the time and I kind of look at you and I think you're like the Eric Clapton of, of photography <laughs> you know you're the sort of the more you're the, you're the kind gentleman guy but very knowledgeable um you know you don't show off too much um. But you know, very very knowledgeable and and um, yeah, I, I, t I, th I think it's amazing that you've you've managed to achieve what you have because I, I look at you and that's what I see and I know a lot of people do do see that you know um, you know you are the Eric Clapton of photography. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's, uh, uh, that's uh, thank you. I, I yeah, I have no I, I have no words for that, but uh, it, it, I, I think I'm really. Um, lucky mostly a, a lot of you know right time right place sort of stuff i think in terms of that you know the fact that my previous career had been as a teacher and that i really enjoyed teaching uh yeah. that for some reason when digital photography came along photography went from being kind of this obscure thing that uh, only a few geeks did uh, kind mm -hmm. of on the side or in the closet you know didn't mm -hmm. want to admit to anybody to yeah. then all of a sudden everybody wanting to learn mm -hmm. photography yeah. Um, became a much more mainstream, popular thing to do. 
And that all, I just happened to be not necessarily any good at any of it. I was just when in the digital photography and the, the digital image developing stuff, I was just slightly mm-hmm. ahead of the curve, you know, like mm-hmm. I got into it a year or two ahead yeah. of most people. So, yeah. so, so I, I think, like I said, I think I got lucky in that people thought I knew what I was talking about only because <laughs> I've been doing it barely longer than they had been doing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, if I was trying to start over with, with my meager skill set now, I, I don't think I'd ever uh, have the same the same success. Um, I'll think, yeah, any, I think I'll think anyone that I'm comes learning. in now is never gonna have any success <laughs> either. It's just a flooded market, isn't it? Flooded market. I mean the sense that it's yeah. it doesn't you could be the you could pull off some of the best images in the in the world, couldn't you, at the moment? But to be to be actually noticed, to put your hand up and say, Hey, look at me isn't easy these days, is it? No. No, you need to be you need to be very proactive and spread yourself yeah, about. But don't you? and, it's not even about that anymore, you know, is it? I yeah. mean, um, no, and even then, mm, yeah, you will struggle. Yeah, um, but yeah, you need to have a podcast. Well, well, you know, yeah, yeah, well, my yeah. mum listens to this, and so what I get her to do is I get her to play it over and over and over and over and over again. So we get lots of listens, <laughs> but we actually nobody <laughs> listens to it, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no not that's true. not quite true. Well, it's not true. Well, now you've got my mom will be listening now also. So, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm I'm finding uh, with the the whole business side of things, it's very much a case of you can't rely on one part of photography at all. You have to look at lots of different places to get income from, whether yeah. that be workshops, teaching, or, or whatever it might be. Mm. But you have to have lots of strings to your bow. Yeah, it's to just make about it creating work. your own world, isn't it? It's just you don't you don't have to be yeah, okay. I'm going to be on a global scale. Everyone has to know who I am, and I'm going to sell workshops worldwide. And everyone's no. going to know who I am tomorrow morning. No, it's not the case. Just just focus yeah. on who you yeah. are and and um, build your own community. You know, for whatever that may be. Yeah. But um, Sean, luminosity masks. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, there you go. You know, <laughs> what yeah, magic yeah, yeah, word happened the there? Part. You just like found luminosity mouse and just went, hang on a second. <laughs> you uh, know, that, that is just the strangest thing to me too, kind of where that's all come to. I mean, they're, they're a wonderful tool. I definitely use them all the time. Mm. I don't just, you know, don't just make videos about them because I don't mm. have anything better to do. Um, <laughs> but they definitely – are a tool for image developing that's very useful, but the, you know they're complex, uh, a little hard to learn, non-intuitive, and so I think a lot of people um, end up needing mm. assistance. Mm. You know, needing mm. help in learning them. Where a lot of things, you know, you can kind of figure out yourself. So there's definitely um, usefulness in in some education mm. around that topic, um, and the I think I mean. I, the way I got into him, I have to tell the, you know, basically Tony Kuiper's the person to blame. If you yeah. want to put blame somewhere yeah. on Luminati, <laughs> yeah. Tony Kuiper, it's his fault. Um, he somehow came across them uh, 20 years ago or almost 20 wow. years ago now and thought, huh, this is interesting. They were, the way he found out about them, they're being used in a totally different way, a non-landscape photography, a completely different mm. sort of thing. Uh, and he thought, I think there's some applications here for um, landscape photographers. And he actually wrote his first article about them and uh, published his first set of actions, which are just very simple, basic actions on that same website mm-hmm. on NPN in 2006. Mm-hmm. And there were about, you know, he publishes this article and about five of us, I think, said, oh, OK, sure, we're game, Tony. Mm-hmm. We'll give this a try. We'll, we'll hear you and read your your really uh, technically dense article and figure out how to do these <laughs> yeah. things and see if there's anything to them. And of the five of us, I think three of us stuck with so who it. So who, who were the other two photographers? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I'm just kind of throwing that out there. No, it's not true. A lot of the, um, the community that was on NPN at that time, I think, saw hmm. the potential, definitely yeah. started working with them. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know other people's workflows specifically, but I know people uh, mostly 
photographers from the United States, but, um, you know, I know Ryan Dyer was kind of in yeah. that, um, he was coming on kind of towards the end of that community, Alex. but some other, you know, Josh, Josh Chris was in there. Mm. Alex Noriega came in a little bit, even after mm. Ryan. Um, I think Alex missed the NPN mm. days, maybe the mm. early NPN days, but, um, people like, um, Kurt, uh, Budliger, Joe Rossbach. I don't know if you're familiar with some of those names. Um, yeah, yeah. anyway, that crowd, Mark Adamus is in that same kind of community and, and, and a bunch of others. I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot who, who, who started yeah. working with them um, and saw the potential. And then Tony kept working on it and we all kind of collaborated through that website and gave him ideas. And he, we, there was a lot of back and forth talk and what you guys were, t- Matt, you were talking about, like when you have a, a group that you can learn from and mm-hmm. uh, you know, help each other out. So it went well. And then, at some point, Tony um, Kuiper, who I, I was traveling and photographing with in the Southwest on one trip, mentioned to me. And by this time, I'd already m- been making some uh, some video courses. He said, yeah, I think a lot of people are not mm-hmm. getting it with the luminosity mass. And I said, well, I think, Tony, you should look into video instruction because it seems to me in my courses that's the way people are learning the best these days, a video that they can watch and stop and pause mm-hmm. and replay and, you mm-hmm. know, practice along with it in the comfort of their own home and that kind of stuff. And he said, oh, OK, video, I'll have to think about that. And Tony thinks about everything for like six months. before. He- <laughs> <laughs> so I think it was like six months later, he called me and he said, OK, Sean, I've been thinking about it. And I think you're right. We do need video instruction for uh, to, to help people learn these techniques and these tools, but I'm not going to make you them. Go. You're going to make mm. them. You're going to make the video. And so that's how I ended up being the luminosity mass oh, thank video you. guy. That's a really <laughs> long story. To, you said luminosity mass. You should never have said that. <laughs> well, it took him six months, but I think he picked the right guy to do it. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks. Well, there's so many people now, you know, other, other um, developers have created tools for luminosity masks. Um, Lots of people teach them. Obviously, people teach them and use them far better than I do mm. at this point. Uh, like I said, I think, again, er, I, just, I got in early. I was on the front of the wave, fortunately. Mm. <laughs> yeah, definitely a fantastic <laughs> tool for sure. So, so, so let's, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'll just say I'm surprised that at some point that Adobe didn't figure out that these that this was a thing that their software mm. was being used this way and make it more accessible. I mean, I'm glad they didn't because the plug in and all the instruction in that has, you know, helped pay for my kids college, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Um, but um, you know, they still remain a capability that's in Photoshop that's buried. And if, you know, if you just start using Photoshop, you would never find them or learn how to use them otherwise. And now, and, and, yeah, and I mean, now we've it? got um, Lightroom, with with masks, yeah. So yeah. now Lightroom and On One and Luminar mm. and all the other uh, photography editing applications have now brought in luminosity mm. masking type uh, capabilities, um, but yet they still remain this kind of buried back door mm. in Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, it's quite. Yeah, strange, I had a, I had, I've had a I've had a go at the luminosity <laughs> masks in in Lightroom. No, uh, doesn't quite do it for me. Oh, I'm a, yeah, they're uh, they're definitely yeah. rudimentary. Uh, they're they're useful. Yeah. They're great. I, I I use them sometimes, but um, yeah, they're like a lot of things in Lightroom. They're a good starting point. Um, mm-hmm. but at some point, when you realize you've bumped up kind of against the edge of what you can do with them, then we always fall mm-hmm. back to Photoshop because that's where you have the most flexibility and power and definitely you know, that kind definitely. of stuff. So, um, mm-hmm. are you guys all Photoshop users or what, what, what your software, your editing software of choice? Yeah. It's a mix of both for me, Lightroom and Photoshop I use both. So do yep. all the basic stuff in Lightroom and then take it into Photoshop for everything else. Really? Yeah. Um, to be fair, I don't really use Lightroom. I, I use it for cataloging. Mm, I, yeah. uh, I import in Lightroom and organize everything in the normally Photoshop's normally where I go. I tend to, mm, oh, I again, tend to use Lightroom now yeah, just, just because it's it's visually easy to see the images you've taken. It's got a nice you know, a cataloging system, and mm-hmm. you can see the images really, really well. Yeah, click the ones you want, and then just import them to just export them into Photoshop. 
But then I, I find it's actually yep. nice to save them and bring them back into Lightroom and then export them from Lightroom yeah. into your various media that you need them for, you know, for print or for, for social media or for your website or however you want to use them. Um, but, yeah, yeah, definitely Photoshop, Photoshop the yeah, whole that's way. that's exactly mm. what I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's always interesting for me to, to hear when I started teaching uh, this stuff – Everyone used Photoshop because that's mm. really all there was at that time. That was one. I mean, there were a couple other um, Microsoft Paint or I don't know. Elements. There were some, some was really elements kind of or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> elements, yeah. There, were, there was yeah. the Photoshop elements out there somewhere too. But you could pretty much be guaranteed that any serious photographer knew how to use Photoshop at a fairly mm. robust level. Uh, and nowadays, like at um, conferences and workshops and things like that, I'll find it's more like 70% wow. are in Lightroom and only 30% even go to Photoshop mm. ever. Right. Um, That's interesting. Uh, yeah. And Lightroom's great. And, and there's uh, so many other applications, non-Adobe applications that I think are also really good. So there's less need to wade into Photoshop. But I think at some point, a lot of people realize, or, you know, they, like I said before, they bump up against the edge of things that they're trying to accomplish or they can't get the, the nuance that they're mm. going for. And that's what gets mm. them into Photoshop. Yeah. Even yeah. still. Yeah. I think a lot of people are, I think that maybe the reason for that is a lot of people are after that sort of one click solution <laughs> and don't want to do quite as much editing. I think that's maybe what, what the problem is nowadays. Anyway, it depends who you are. Yeah. yeah Isn't absolutely. that half the fun though? Don't you enjoy that Sean when you've got that image yeah. and you're, you bring it up on the computer oh, yeah. and you think, you know what? Oh, I'm going to get out some Jimi Hendrix. And you put your headphones on and you <laughs> kick back for an hour, you know, and you get stuck right into it. Isn't that fun? That's good fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. People miss that. Absolutely. People miss that because it's just bang, 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 five minutes, done, save, export, on social media, finished. You know, done, finished, yeah. over. Yeah. I just- I just spent a week or a couple of weeks with uh, Albert Dross. I don't, are you guys familiar with Albert? He's from the yeah, Netherlands. yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, at the Out of Oregon conference and just watching him, the guy's a machine and he's a brilliant <laughs> photographer and he's a very skilled uh, image developer with any software. He can use it all. But yeah. to watch him, he would be out with his phone, some Sony phone, and taking photos and then editing them in the field and uploading them to his social media as we were, you know, on the phone. I was just trying to, you know, not get hit by a wave, and he's already made five, five posts on his social media. Um, he was enjoying the moment. Uh, yeah, no, he, he's like I said, he's amazing. He's he's he can really do a lot of things all at once. He's, he's got an amazing mind and amazing energy. I love it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's a capability. But I think he's a good example of someone who, in the moment or in a in, in the right situation can use that technology to do the kind of couple clicks and mm. upload it. But yeah. he also, you know, knows the, you know, the finer art sits down, spends the time and really creates mm. some beautiful imagery. Um, I think it depends though. D- people are different. I, I run across all kinds of people. Some people lo- are like, I think sounds like you guys and myself are similar that we enjoy that process of sitting mm-hmm. down with a raw file yeah. and just yeah. tucking yeah. into it and spending some time, um, kind of working with it, listen to some music mm. of choice. I'm not sure Jimmy, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I think, and there are a lot of people that are like that, but I do know people that that really is not what they enjoy about photography. They want to be out taking photos. They don't like technology. They don't like the computer. They don't mm. like sitting in a room. And so for them to be able to reach, uh, you know, a finished image quickly, uh, mm. that they, I, I, I see why that's mm. valuable or, um, of interest mm. to a lot of Definitely. people. Yeah, for mm. sure. So each, yeah, each yeah. their own, yeah, right? Yeah. Everyone, yeah, everyone yeah, gets exactly. their own yeah, piece yeah. out of photography, don't they? So apart uh, from, sorry, well, Mike, you I, go, go I, ahead. I, oh, no, no. I was, uh, sorry. I'm curious. Can I ask yeah, you guys of questions? Of course you can. Yeah, um, go ahead. Yeah. Right away. <laughs> I, like I said, I know a little bit of Paul's backstory, but also I have to um, realize that I it was you know peppered with Gavin and Adam, so I don't know. <laughs> probably none of that's actual re- actually real either. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so how long have you guys, I mean, Matt, it sounds like you've been doing this quite a while. How long have you guys been doing it? And what, uh, what's kind of your main focus in, in the world of photography? Tom? Um, well, I've probably been shooting maybe probably the least amount of time, I would say. Um, maybe 10, 10 years, maybe. Probably only seven years. He just went through puberty six years ago. What are you talking about, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not that long, really, no. But I've always been quite creative. You know, I've always wanted to know. I've never been happy with just being told that's what you do. I've always been interested in learning how things work and how you can make yourself better. Like you were talking earlier about images. I, I could always, I think that, that would look good taking a picture, but how would I take it back? Maybe if I come in the morning or maybe if I use this filter or maybe if I do that. So I've always been interested in creativity, um, whether in other, uh, lots of other different things as well. So today's episode of the landscape photography vlogcast is proudly sponsored by case filters global bringing a high quality filter shooting experience to many global landscape photographers and enthusiasts paul tom and matt all use these filters on field and highly endorse the product so if you're looking for a filter system to add to your camera bag that is durable easy to use and highly functional and most importantly optically neutral then look no further than case filters case capture with confidence but yeah, um, yeah, that was about sort of 10 years ago and never really looked back. And then once I started getting into, you know, the, the editing side of things, it's just, it goes on and on and on. And you never, <laughs> you never really get to the bottom of it, do you? Uh, I'm sure you, I, I edit images probably maybe a lot quicker than you, maybe in terms of turnover because of the YouTube channel, but I quite often re-edit images and I think, oh, I wish I would have sort of waited. And all. Or sometimes when you, um, uh, I don't know about you, but I tend to shoot a lot of woodlands now. And depending on what sort of mood I'm in at that time, it sort of dictates how the image is going to look. Or I might think, oh, I'm not going to edit that one because I don't really feel like editing that one. I feel like editing some a bit warmer or cooler. or Right. Uh, yeah. So I, I think... Um, you sort of have to redevelop your emotion, learn how to bring that out in your images and that the post-processing and the process of taking the images are all sort of combined into one, really. I can't even remember what the mm. question was now. <laughs> I just <laughs> ran it up. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. want to know what you guys do in your, your yeah. photography. Yeah. Um, I feel like Matt. You, I, did, you did a Matt. <laughs> you did a Matt again. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah, you yeah. did. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've been doing it as a since I was a kid. Um, I started off as a kid interested in it because my dad w- used to have a camera and he took boxes of slides, absolutely stacks of slides. And I got interested in it back then. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of drifted away from it completely. I, I, I was interested in the process of it, but it was too technical for me. So at that point, I kind of drifted away from it. And then maybe, uh, what, 10, 12 years ago, I came back to it. And the reason I came back to it was because I studied um, like uh, habitat management and uh, countryside management, sort of outdoor skills. Um, couldn't get work in that field. So I wanted to use my photography for the as my sort of um, way back into conservation and that sort of thing. And obviously landscape photography was the thing for me at that point. So then I started to pick it up and learn more about it again and learn more about the process and actually dedicate more time to it. And uh, yeah, landscapes is really my thing. Every kind of landscape, like intimate shots, wide scenes, all of it really interests me. So yeah, that's what got me into it. And then um, maybe a year ago, well, a year and a half ago now, um, I... I had a temporary job which lasted for 10 years <laughs> and it was driving me insane. My mental health was really suffering because of it. And then uh, the vehicle broke down and that was kind of the last straw with it. So I decided, right, that's it. It's all going, sold the van, got rid of it all and thought, right, I'm going to go full-time photography and just give it a try. Uh, and, good for uh, you. And, and mental health all better now. 
Yeah, well, it's 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 always <laughs> been a thing. It's always been there, but it's it's way better than it was. Way better than it was. It's some. I mean, photography really helps me out that way. Gives me well, kind of good. peace. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. I I because I I've heard I've heard it go both mm. ways for people. Actually, you know the you know that photography. Um, drove you know they did a full dive into photography and it ended up just um you know creating anxiety and and panic and all kinds of things yeah Uh, but i think think for photography for me it really is is a um yeah super valuable thing to do regardless of of why i'm doing it just being out taking photos um, yeah helps Mm. me yeah i think Mm. so definitely so good. So so the, so over a year, you said, Paul. Yeah, just just over a year. Probably getting on for a year and a half now. Yeah, um, and and you're feeling good about that. That's awesome. Yeah, starting <laughs> to see the light at the end of the tunnel now that next year's coming. This year's been particularly hard getting the first year out of the way, and yeah. Uh, but but now I'm starting to focus on on more things that I can see are going to help me make money. Then it's getting better because that's that's the main anxiety I've got left now. Uh, all Except for money. Gone, but <laughs> that's well, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, your yeah. source of anxiety. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but but um, uh, yeah, money is the only real anxiety that's left. Is is how are you going to make money? How are you going to you know support your family and all the rest of it? So it's that's the main thing now. Yeah, yeah. So it's that's the, the hardest thing to lose as well, isn't it? You know. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like me. Um, I work full time and you know, quite good money and it's hard to um it's hard to say right um the mortgage is on you know it i'm going to put all that to side and uh risk it all as such but uh yeah, it's, yeah, it's, not it's not easy is it? i can imagine it's very so sean mm. when when you made the yeah. choice you've got two boys right yeah I don't know how I, do. I knew that, but anyway, that's yep. creepy, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> how old are your kids, mate, if you don't mind me asking? None at all. Yeah, uh, the older one's 21. He's just going to be 21 coming up here, and the younger okay, one's so you 19. you made a brave move, didn't you? So you're sort of pretty much where we kind of are now. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, yeah. Like I've got two young boys. Yeah, more or less. Um, yeah. Paul's yeah, the same. How, how old are your kids? Four. Yeah. Mm. Eight mm. and four, yeah. And Paul? Mm. Six and nine. Six and nine, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they were part of the motivation for me to, to give photography a go as a, as a career. Because um, both my wife and I were school teachers, and mm. we, like for a decade, we really put everything we had mm. into teaching. We loved it. And, uh, yeah, it was a great job we we loved our students we felt like it was a worthy worthwhile way to spend our time Mm -hmm. Uh, but then when we had kids we didn't i think we didn't realize how much time you know that we were putting into our teaching until we would have to come home from work and then try to be parents uh and then also then go back to work the next day and try to be teachers and um it was just running us (laughs) ragged so that's when we started looking at, you know, what are some other options and how can we kind of have more flexible time and uh, free up some more time to be more present as, mm. as parents. That's mm. right. That's a really good point, actually, because that's <laughs> that's kind of the stance I stand my missus at the moment. I was like, yeah, but if I <laughs> if I do, <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if I'm uh, not in my van or, you know, laying bricks or less, I can be at home and we can do this and that. And then she's like, yeah, but then you haven't got me haven't got as much money. And it, so it's always like a. But no, that is definitely a way that I, how I look at it as well, as I think, how can I be more present? Because, you know, yeah. they, you know, like I, I, like my, my two, well, one's four and one's three months. So, and I, she, they just grow every day. They just, they're different, aren't they? And it's, Absolutely. You know, yeah, it's happened so fast. So. Yeah. And I think that the idea of, you know, freeing up time or having a more flexible schedule and being more present, uh, is definitely possible in there. But I also know of people that, um, get so fixated on the photography business stuff yeah. that they actually end up spending less time with the family because it just becomes this obsession okay. of, 
you know, getting the next photo or the next set of photos, making sure you're out there for every single sunrise, um, mm. just adding more and more ways to try to, you know, make that income and yeah. you end up working much. twice as much and being away from home twice as much as you were with whatever you were doing before. Yeah. yeah definitely, well, yeah. this is my issue at the minute because <laughs> that's exactly what I'm going through. Because <laughs> at the minute, when you're first trying to set something up, it's like you have to pour everything into it because it's yeah. it feels like you've got to. Generate yeah, you've got to build. You've got to build the foundation so you, to begin with, don't you? You know, before you can. Yeah, exactly. You know. So you you tend not to stand a step away from it very much. It's like a mm-hmm. constant thing, and then you know you're sitting down, and you think I'll just have half an hour sit down, and then the phone pings, and it's another message about this that, or, and and so it goes on. But then you mm-hmm. you look at it and you think, oh, that could be potential income, so I better, and it becomes yeah a habit at that point that you have to kind of almost set yourself hours in a way and say, right, that's a cut off point. I need to kind of step away mm-hmm. from it at that point. Because, yeah, it's really hard. It's definitely the first year to two years, I think, is going to be the hardest, or I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, for sure. <laughs> and, so, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, do you do you have, like, um, obviously, you don't, I'm assuming you don't have, like, set days, but do you, like, allocate time where you think, right, no, we're going to, the, we're going to, see, to the cinema or we're going to do this or... Or do you have what? Do you have a structure to your day, or how planned is it? Or do you, you know what I mean? You, obviously, you have like things planned, months like conferences and things like that. But day to day, do you sort of go at it as it comes at you, or do you sort of plan? Yeah, yeah I think it definitely was very structured in the beginning. Um, and again, coming from being a teacher. I was used to having a very structured day. Um, So that was actually nice for me because moving into working for myself, that was, I think that's one of the things that people worry about. If you're self-employed and you're working from home or wherever, you know, what's going to motivate you to get up in the morning or sit down at the desk and actually start doing some work. Um, Mm. But since I kind of had that daily work routine, um, that, that was good for me. Yeah. So I would just, when we, again, when the kids were young, it was get up. I would usually get up early in the morning in the dark, do an hour or two of work until it was time for the kids to get up. Then I'd take some time off and do the morning routine, the breakfast and the, you know, getting kids dressed and all that. And when they were school age, get them off to school. And then once they were out the door off to school, then I would work until they came home from school at the afternoon and then try to take you know, once they were back home, then from then on, I wasn't working anymore. And then I also tried to not work on the weekends. And so Mm -hmm. all of that worked out pretty well. Although I think knowing some of my colleagues and watching what they've done and what they're accomplishing, uh, work-wise, um, yeah, to really build an empire, I think that's not enough time. <laughs> yeah. You know, it worked for me and like I was very happy with the, and, and grateful that I was able to do it that way. Um, but I also know, and a lot of these are people that, that don't have families or kids anyways, but also mm-hmm. some that do, I know work a lot more, um, you know, that, that just basically are always working. Um, uh, yeah. My friend, Michael Shane Bloom is, you know, he's kind of, ah, he, he has a significant other or he had, I don't know what the current status is. Sorry, Michael. There you go. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, they each have their own careers and no kids. And uh, yeah. And so Michael can pretty much live and breathe photography 24 seven if he chooses to. And a lot of mm-hmm. times he does. I mean, he really um, lives and breathes it. And uh, I know a lot of people like that in that situation, but I think if, yeah, if you've got a family and, and kids, it's a lot harder um, and you got to find that balance or at least I did. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think some, some marriages have probably also, you know, <laughs> gone South because. You know, yeah, I would imagine there. so. <laughs> yeah. yeah social, imagine so. social media. Yeah. You oh, know, yeah. when you, when you talk about working a big, unfortunately, 30 to 30, 35 percent of it is social media these days, isn't it? Unfortunately, you know, um, maybe not in your case, yeah. because I mean, you already have, you know, your foundation is built. Um, but you know, someone who's starting out, unfortunately, they have to spend a lot of time on social media, don't they? 
to get anywhere, you know. Um, that's it, it really seems that way. There's, yeah. nothing, there's nothing much you can do about and, that, is there? If there was a if there was an answer to it. <laughs> um, yeah. That's where the yeah. audience is, isn't it? Unfortunately, that's pretty much mm-hmm. where the audience is, and that's how you get no well not noticed so much, but that's how you you get your your stuff seen, whatever it might be, workshops, work, whatever it might be, that's mm. how you you get your mm. work out there now. I really think it is that way. And when, and when social media started, I can remember, you know, because like NPN and Flickr weren't really social media. I mean, they, they are kind of, but they, that wasn't really the mm-hmm. idea at that point. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it was just a place you went to, you know, those days to meet and communicate with yeah, other forums, photographers. Weren't they really more than anything uh, else. Yeah. 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 yeah a forum. Exactly. Just a forum, mm-hmm. a message board. Um, but I remember when Facebook started, and, you know, no one was hardly anybody was on Facebook, but it was growing. And at that time, and most people were just posting text, you know, like Facebook was, hey, everybody, um, <laughs> I'm going to go walk my dog today. That was like a Facebook <laughs> post. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Was like, oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> Tell me more about walking dog, you know? Uh, and so <laughs> then when, when a photographer came on and posted a photo, like, instantly photos were so much more interesting on social media than everyone's mm. just text posts. Yeah. Um, and so you could grow a, a, a following really mm. quickly on, on Facebook and then mm. Instagram. And um, yeah. And it, for a while there was, a, I think it was called Google plus that mm. came and went, but yeah. like, the, you know, f- you, you, people were growing massive audiences really quickly because everyone was interested and, and photos were the, were the most interesting thing to look at on social media. And nowadays, again, everyone's photos are not interesting. It's all video and TikTok dances and whatnot. And so, yeah, yeah. yeah trying to, trying to gather a, a, a following a viewership on social mm-hmm. media now seems like it must be, I, I can't even imagine how, how mm-hmm. I've got the it. answer, Sean. Yeah. Naked, you get oh, a naked woman inside a landscape. You do that, mate, you're going to get followers. Yeah, yeah. That, I, think, I think that is, sadly, the key to all social media is, uh, I wish it was the same with naked yeah. dudes. Yeah. Because if I could just go stand yeah. naked in my photos and get <laughs> followers yeah. from that, that would be amazing. But I don't think it works, it works the other way, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We are just <laughs> dropping immediately. Yeah. So yeah, um, it's, it's it's really difficult, and uh, hence the hence the way Instagram's demise is slowly happening before our eyes. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, yeah. A lot of photographers seem to be leaving it, which is sad oh. in a way, isn't it? Really, you were saying just the other day, weren't you, Matt? That it used to be a powerful place. Yeah, it was a powerful place to communicate, not to showcase your work. You know, let's yeah. face it, you can't showcase your work on yeah, a freaking exactly. phone for God's sake. If you're spending hours on a phone, you get the best camera, best lenses, best tripod, spending hours in post production. You know, all that hard work you go and then put it on a, on a freaking phone screen. That's not showcasing your work. It was just to to just to say, mm. hey, I just did this new image. You know, go and look at it on my website, or you want to buy a print, go here. Mm. It was a commu- it was a way of communication, wasn't it? Really, I mean, but then it just went to That's true. Yeah, people were just showing their stuff on Instagram, and that was it. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, and, and it was great. Uh, and like I was saying before, it was it was astonishing to me at the beginning. And it, Matt, how long have you been doing this? Sounds like a long time. How how, how you were doing yeah. film? And were you working? Yeah, yeah, I'm old. Yeah, I'm old. Mate. With film? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, you're not as old as me. I I, can, I don't know. Mate. I can tell that. <laughs> no, I've been doing it since uh, when I first moved over to Europe, 2002, 2002. Bought my first camera. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. You're in it. That's kind of uh, yeah, kind of like me in terms yeah. of digital, anyway. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, the when I started my business, the way that I tried to advertise was um, I tried to generate a mailing list, and then I would make these photo postcards with you know the things my business offerings on it, and then yeah. I would send like four or five hundred or eight hundred or whatever my mailing list was out, you know, through the actual mm-hmm. mail, physical mail. To people and then 
would hear absolutely nothing back, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Crickets. Uh, you know, like every couple of months I'd send out uh, another 800 mailers and hear <laughs> nothing back. And then when Facebook came and I can remember after, I don't know, a couple months on Facebook and instead of a mailing list of 800 people, I had, I don't know, at that time on Facebook, you know, 10,000 people following you on Facebook was huge. Yeah. And I would post an image or advertise something I was doing and get dozens, if not hundreds of responses from an audience of Mm -hmm. 10,000 people. And I'm like, holy cow, this is it. This is the new way we do this. Um, So that was that kind of heyday with that. And then at some point, then, of course, Facebook started restricting who actually sees you know, and how the algorithms work. And yeah. all of a sudden the engagement started going down. I realized, oh, that Facebook mailing list I thought I had isn't really my mailing list. I don't own that. Facebook owns that. And if they don't want to s- send out my stuff to the people who asked to see it, then they can do that. And mm-hmm. so then now trying to figure out kind of the combination, the social media, like you guys were saying, I think is still a really essential piece, but then yeah. to also have your own <clears throat> list of, of, of your audience or your customer base or whoever it is that you can literally get them the, the information mm. that they're looking for, that they mm. want to see from you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a fine balance, isn't it? It's really hard, hard trying to work out how that's going to work, how to do, how to get the most out of that. Cause you've got to have a way of getting that mailing list in the first place. And obviously that's social mm. media, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, having some way to get those people that have volunteered to hear from you on social media to take the next step and volunteer to a, you know, to an email list or a, a whatever it is, a, a mm-hmm. newsletter or something like that. So, how, how do you, apart from your, your tutorials and stuff, mate? How does how, what what else do you do in photography? I imagine you do quite a lot of workshops. Um, where do you do your workshops? Uh, just yeah, tell us a little bit about that if you wouldn't mind. Sort of your on-field type of work. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I do some workshops, definitely not as many as a lot of people do. Um, I, know, I know quite a few folks that really their their photography education businesses or or tour business or whatever the kind of the focus is, is based around Mm -hmm. doing workshops and they do dozens, if not more a year. Um, I think the most I've ever done in a year is maybe eight and uh, during COVID none. And um, now if I can do a couple a year, that's pretty good for me. And I always do workshops. I never organize my own workshops. So I'm always (laughs) just a a hired gun, an add on um, by either a company or another photographer who, who does okay. organize. Um, cause I, I basically I'm, I'm, um, I have a very limited skill set, <laughs> and I'm not very organized. It's uh, uh, certain things and I'm somewhat lazy too, I think compared to, uh, that's why I always feel like when I see <laughs> other photographers, this like how much other people are, are doing and how much energy they have and how organized and how much they're accomplishing Mm. and getting done. So, yeah. So my workshops generally, if somebody says, Hey, Sean, I'm organizing this workshop, uh, to this place. Um, and I'm looking for someone to come along and help me teach or be a second, a co-lead or whatever interested. Um, those are the ways I end up doing workshops. And even then I'm very selective about which ones of those I do, but I love it. I love going out in the field. I love being out with people and uh, sharing the experience and being able to teach. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Um, and I've done tours or workshops or whatever you want to call them all over the place. A lot of stuff here in the North, in the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Washington, Northern California, but also, um, all around the world. I've done stuff in, in Europe, South America. Um, well, I guess Europe and South America. Oh, Hawaii. That's the United States, but it's an Island <laughs> in the middle of the ocean. Um, but yeah, some different places like that. Um, and I'll definitely be doing more. I, I think I'm starting to get kind of into the tail end of, of my career, probably even whether I want to be or not, it's probably just for everyone else's sake. It's good for me to, um, be less, uh, I don't know, slowly slide into the horizon out there over the next few years. But, um, 
Yeah. At this point, if I can do, you know, a couple of tours a year, um, go to, I love teaching at conferences and the idea of landscape photography conferences as a, a thing that exists yeah. now is great. Um, you're so, you're so lucky to have them to over there, out. aren't you? Like, we, yeah, don't. we don't have them, do we? No, you guys don't have Europe them. really misses no. that. Like, imagine a conference in the Dolomites up in a big refuge hut right on the top of a freaking mountain with 500 people up there yeah. um, with all those sponsors and everything. Oh, I'd love it. But it just <laughs> – I'm surprised. Well, I'm, I mean, I did the photo pills camp on Menorca yeah, in yeah. Spain yeah, I saw this that. last year. So that's, those guys, that crew definitely has taken mm. that model to – over over the over the mm. ocean there, um, but other than I just assumed there was more of that going no, on, but there's not. not huh? Out, out of no, out of none. Chicago, is that what no, you call no. it? Out of out, well, it's out of everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, out of Chicago. Yeah. You need, yeah. So that's one group, and there's a couple others that are doing that mm. kind of style of landscape photography. Oh, they're fantastic, conference. aren't they? What a great idea! It must be. It must be just beautiful mm. things to go. Just to have like huge amounts of people all together, just enjoying photography you know that's 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 great isn't it it's like just a- it is it's really it, it's really fun it's that social piece you know i i actually do spend most of my time photo doing my photography mm. by myself you know without him nowhere yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no not the yeah i <laughs> I'd, I'd love to hang out with adam more uh, even with that you know people like adam and other people i've known for years and if you know you end up actually making your schedules align once or twice in a decade. That's, that's always um, mm. just a bonus, but yeah, no, most of the time I'm, I'm kind of out traipsing around by myself. So to get to go to an event where mm. it's landscape photography based and you've got, you know, instructors from around the world or your friends and colleagues that you don't get to see that often. So it's really fun to be able to see them and collaborate with them. And then to have, you know, all of these um, enthusiasts, photography and landscape photography enthusiasts who are there, who are so psyched to, you know, have never been to the Oregon coast or uh, Acadia national park or um, you know, the desert mm. Southwest or wherever the conference is, you know, they're just, so pumped to be there and then just to get out in the field and, and mm. learn and have the experiences. Yeah. It's a really life affirming mm. thing I think, to do. I think, I think Paul can make it happen. Yeah, can't you, Paul? Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, there oh, we go. Oh, yeah. that- <laughs> <laughs> they call it like out of London. Yeah, like that. call it out of London. <laughs> yeah. Out of We're having the Dolomites. <laughs> yeah, okay. 2025. Well, yeah. I think I, uh, I think it sounds great, but I will I will say this: I do know um, Chris Smith, who started out of Chicago. He's the and he's the guy that kind of is the head of the show at Out of Chicago. Uh, is a photographer and he loves photography, and he was also a school teacher. And when he was figuring out how to transition out of teaching and into photography and looking for ways to support his family and mm-hmm. generate an income. Yeah, uh, he thought, oh, photography conferences, and he's great at it, and they're very successful, and they do really well, and people very much appreciate, you know, his efforts. But I don't think he takes very many photos mm. anymore. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's the thing, isn't it? This yeah, is the thing. so that's that's the challenge. There is, you know, how do you how are you going to be involved in photography? I guess. Yeah. Mm. It was always a worry when I started, to be honest. It was a worry, did, would I uh, not do it as much? Would I not mm-hmm. get out as much? Mm-hmm. Which, which mm-hmm. you don't. You spend a lot more time in front of the computer screen than you do <laughs> out on field. It's just one of those things. I go months um, without taking wow. a photograph. Yeah. Yeah, that was, I was, that was my next question, actually, was how often do you, do you <laughs> actually get out? Yeah, I used to be, you know, uh, before I was trying to make money at it, I was out. Uh, you know, several times a week, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, nowadays, partly because I don't feel the pressure, like I have mm-hmm. to be out all the time. Um, but also just because there's so much other stuff to be doing. And mm-hmm. I also tr- I'm trying to work less at this stage where I'm at now. Um, yeah, uh, sometimes I will go, like, I think I went from when I was in Spain in May, came back yeah. in early June and I didn't take a photograph again until um, like wow. September. Mm. 
or not, or not that. I mean, I took pictures with my phone and I, I did take a, a holiday in the UK. We walked uh, the length of the Thames River, my wife and I and some friends. And so oh, I had a yeah. camera and I took pictures as we, we walked along the river, uh, which was fun. But in terms of like going out to take photos that are, you know, part of my work portfolio. Yeah, I went from June to September. Wow. That's impressive. It's amazing. I'd go like, mad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, you guys feel like God, you need to be out. Well, well, I haven't, yeah. I haven't yeah. taken a photo since yeah. we, we. Paul and I just came back from a, a workshop we did in in Abruzzo. How, how long ago was that, mate? A month. That yeah, was a month. A month and I haven't ago, been out since. Yeah. And if yeah. I don't go out in the next couple of days, mm. I'm going to be headbutting the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I've, as long as you video yourself doing it and put it on yeah. social media, yeah, it'll be worth <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, the difference is too. I'm 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 um, a country bumpkin, mate. I'm, I'm I'm you can tell from my from my accent. I'm Australian. Well, I hope you can anyway. If not, we need to fix the audio up on the podcast. Yeah. Um, and and I live in Rome, so I'm surrounded <laughs> by cement. And um, yeah, I just feel the desperate need to be out in nature. I mean, where you're in, you know, the Pacific Northwest, you guys are so spoiled up there, aren't you? It just, it's, it's yeah. yeah. It's it's really nice. I mean that I'm I'm out I'm I am out in the landscape yeah, yeah. every day you know whether it's hiking or riding my bike or skiing or this last summer I was taking up a thing called wing foiling which oh, is yeah, a, yeah. you know hydrofoiling on the water with a with a like you're holding onto this inflatable mm-hmm. kite thing mm-hmm. anyway yeah so I'm always out doing stuff and I love it it's just um, yeah I th- I think late, these days I feel less like I need to always have the camera with me all the time. And I can remember going nuts when if there was a good sunrise or sunset or beautiful light happening and I wasn't out taking photos, that was driving me nuts. Uh, And I think that's, yeah, something about getting older and uh, yeah, maybe just, I don't know, maybe you don't care as much or or you've just been doing it long (laughs) enough. But it doesn't bother me as much, but I I consider that's a good thing because um, when I do go out and take photos, I appreciate it that much more. And I feel I actually take better photos when I've had breaks mm. in between. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it just helps you see better, doesn't yeah. it? For me, it really does. And I'm, I'm so, uh, ready to do it. You know, I'm excited to do it. Um, not feeling like, ah, oh, I gotta mm. get up at, in the dark and go out in the cold and make mm. some photos again. Mm. Um, yeah. I, never, I never want photography to feel like that. Cause to me, it, photography is fun. It's a thing I want to yeah. do for fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't want to become a drug. Does it? it doesn't want to become a, a chore to do it. That's, that was my, always my worry. And it, mm. it certainly doesn't, you're just not going to mm. let it. I don't think. Yeah. But yeah. I think if you feel like getting out there every day and you can, you should do that too. I, I, I know people, that are out every day taking photos and yeah, they go crazy if they don't get out every day. And I think that's great too. Yeah, for sure. So what's your, what's, where's your favorite area to go and photograph around here? Yeah. I think, um, for me close by is, I mean, I, I kind of came into photography photographing mountains cause that's where I was, you know, that's where I was when I was starting photography, it was trying to document mm. climbing mountains so I had yeah. a real, I have a real affinity for mountains, but I have to say in this area, going over to the Oregon coast, the Southern Oregon coast and the Northern California coastal redwoods are my two yeah. favorite mm-hmm. places. Um, the, uh, they're photogenic year round. Um, there's plenty of places that you can go and n- not see another person. And it's just quiet and um, so many different variations of the light and the weather and the you know, mm-hmm. the various landscape conditions. So yeah, I love that. that is a favorite for sure. And, um, and Oregon's just great where I live um, because we have the, the, you know, the Pacific coast and the great shoreline We've got a couple of different mountain ranges and a combination of mountain ranges and river valleys. Um, yeah. And then all of Eastern Oregon is high desert. So the two thirds of the state of Oregon um, looks like Nevada or, or, or Utah. So that's all it's right crazy. around here as well. So it's crazy. Cause you go from rainforests to mm. desert. It's <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. You've pretty much got everything there. Yeah. Have you, have you been in, in Oregon, Paul? 
No, never, never. Um, but you've possibly, been in BC. Possibly coming that way, but uh, no, I haven't um, as yet. I've been across to uh, Vancouver Island, so I guess it's a sort of similar thing with the forests there, apart from obviously they're not redwoods. They're, uh, but old large old growth, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the forests yeah. there are very similar, yeah. And and were, were you living in BC or? No, just I just went out. I just went out to uh, spend a couple of weeks with Adam. We ah. just went out to the, uh, yeah, went across there for a couple of weeks. So Got it. Yeah, so were you all on the island when you were there? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I didn't leave the island. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, well, it's, it's, pretty, it's beautiful. I love I love it up there. Um, yeah. I'm guessing it's kind of a sort of similar climate to, uh, to the Pacific North, Northwest, is it? Yeah, parts of it. Um, yeah, yeah, I think the island itself is yeah. – wetter and you know more more um you know greener uh, yeah yeah mm, more temperate in okay. general i mean you can find you know like the oregon coast the washington coast you'll get similar yeah it's basically like if you just broke off the coast of, of oregon and put it out in the ocean then you've got vancouver <laughs> island um, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, uh, is it olympic well, national park that looks very sort of similar to what i was seeing yeah so olympic national park you know is i mean that's whatever that is 30 miles away from Vancouver Island across, yeah, yeah. The, across the sound there. Um, yeah. So basically if uh, Vancouver Island w- was like Olympic national park, it just is now an Island instead yeah, of attached yeah, to yeah. mainland. Yeah. So that's all very yeah. similar. Um, yeah. And beautiful, you know, that kind of mm. temperate rainforest is just gorgeous. Yeah, just, it's gorgeous. Um, and Matt, you said you're in, you're yeah. in Italy. Yeah. Been here, been here for so, quite a while, yeah, mate. Not many rainforests there no. and i guess in the uk you got to go kind of north and west maybe yeah, rainforest so i when i go back home down to australia we've got cold climate rainforests beautiful ones um down right in the south mm-hmm. in australia so when i go home I, you know, I enjoy those they're lovely over here it's sort of more yeah sort of dolomites tuscany or um there's a there's a, a new area that i've been focusing a lot of my attention on the last couple of years an area called abruzzo which is um mm-hmm. it's Probably a bit inaccessible as far as tourism goes, but there's some, um, yeah, some definitely mm-hmm. beautiful mountain ranges through that's very rugged, um, very medieval, uh, you know, the old abandoned castle Perfect. and stuff like that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's beautiful. No, no I'm quite spoiled uh, with what, I've got, what I can choose gorgeous. here. It's um, just I, I do miss shooting the landscapes in Australia, though, because Australia is just so abundant. You can – and, um, you know, people think that everything's been shot, don't they? And then you go to Australia and you said like, no, nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah. every every you could just travel forever and ever and ever in Australia and never shoot every, and there's just so much diversity in Australia. Probably the only thing we don't have is those, you know, mountain ranges sort of don't go past three thousand meters. So, um, right. But apart from that, yeah, there's everything there. But um, yeah, Australia is mm-hmm. definitely on my list. It's a, it's a place I haven't been, but it's it's high on my list of places mm-hmm. to, to travel oh, and photograph. Yeah, you would love it. Um, but yeah, I've been kind of waiting. I, I want to be able to do it well, you know, not yeah. just go for a week and see. Yeah, you need to kind of get a car and spend yeah. a few months and take your time. Yeah. Let yeah. it all, let it all seep yep. in. There's just so, so much, yeah. so much to do there. So much everywhere, isn't there really? Um, uh, the world, the world is a beautiful place, isn't it? We're lucky we've got yeah. to get yeah. to capture some of it. That's for sure. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And my thing now is more and more looking for places that aren't overrun mm. with humans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. 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 That's the trick. I love it? that that people are appreciating and and visiting the land, you know, landscape, beautiful places. But um, yeah, it's getting harder and harder to find. Not harder and harder. It's just more and more effort to get to places that don't have yeah. crowds. I've, I've, I'm fine. Yeah, look, in Australia, I've never had a tripod next to me. Never. Yeah, and I think yeah. Australia is one of those places. I mean, even in, in Italy, sure. where I've taken the guys, where we did our last workshop, I mean, the only time we had one guy we saw, didn't we? Paul, he came up to us. He yeah, noticed, he noticed me from a distance. He came up to me and said, oh, are you Matt Bishop? And and that was the only photographer we saw. That's – um. Yeah, that's wow. when you, yeah, and that's yeah. Italy, and that's Italy. You know, <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't think that's exactly. happening. Well, so, that's, yeah. 
there still are those places that yeah. you can find. It just takes the work and the effort and, and then we find them and then everyone else wants to go there too. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a vicious circle. So, Sean, it? there's one thing I want to talk about. I mean, we're getting up to one hour, one okay. and a quarter hours on the podcast now. Um, Ooh, and my mum's finger's getting really sore because she keeps replaying it all the time. And uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we haven't talked about your photography. And I, I just one thing I want to highlight for people who don't know anything about your work or don't know too much about you, I'm coming from someone, I, I've studied your work over the years and I've I've personally believe I've learnt a lot from you. Um, and one thing I noticed when I actually – don't focus on the, the the teaching part of the photography. So the actual photographer itself, you know, the artist itself. I, I look at your images and probably one word I think sort of summarises your photography and that's purity. Uh, when I notice your photos, I see things mm. to be extremely pure. You've got this way of demonstrating, um, uh, I don't know, I don't have another word for it, pure. It's very pure. Your photography is very clean. It's very sense of cleansing um you know there's so many different types of photography now we've got dark moods and we've got um uh you know there's this type of photography where a lot of people tend to use a lot of um soft glow in their horizons to give it a certain feel and you know many many different techniques that we all know about hdr whatever black and whites yours is just very very clean um you know true to the colors um yeah i just thought i'd like to bring that up because i you know as as an artist, aside from the teaching, um, I really, really love your work, mate. And it's been really great to have you on today. Um, I think you're a, mm. uh, a very important person to the history of landscape photography. Mm. Oh, well, thank you very much. Mm. I appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, thanks for the kind words about the photos too. I uh, I, I think purity, I, I'll, I like that. Um, yeah, I think that definitely fits kind of – um, yeah, I think we all make what makes sense to us and what feels right to us. And I'm generally a positive person. I'm really, uh, energetic mm. and happy when I'm out in the landscape and I'm, you know, I'm, I, I definitely follow light and color. And I think all of those things come through in my images, just kind of subconsciously. Mm. Um, mm. yeah. So if that comes through, then excellent. Cause that's exactly all the words you used, I think kind of describe me on the inside. You can see that. Yep. After That's having a conversation fun. with you, you yeah, can you tell, can can't you? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All right. So what's coming up for you, Sean? What's coming up for you? Oh, let's see. Well, I just moved house. So still I've, I've probably got several more weeks of, you know, trying to figure out where, what box things are in and <laughs> um, putting together Ikea furniture and who knows what else i got to be doing, figuring out how to make my new office look presentable for, for videos and things. Um, so that's a, me, the immediate priority. And then, yeah, I, I've got some more, you know, out of Chicago conferences in, in, you know, in the future, I haven't started um, getting back into tours and workshops since COVID, where a lot of people are back doing that full swing now, but I've kind of been holding back, but I'll get back going with that eventually. And then um, definitely some other trips. You know, I always try to figure out things to do in the winter, get out and do some winter photography um, and some other travels, but I don't have any of them pinned down right now. Um, oh, Photo Cascadia, we have a book on the state of Washington that just uh, just came out that. a okay. week or so ago. And and uh, so we're, we're kind of the, the group is in the middle of doing some promotional stuff around that. We're going to um, be up in Seattle uh, doing a, a book event. And uh, some of us are going to be doing a, a Channel 5, King 5 Seattle TV appearance okay, wow. around that as well. So that'll be fun. And that, that book's now wow. it's already out there for sale, is it? So if people want to... People it want to, is, yeah. If we want to know yeah. anything about that book, they can just go what straight onto the Photo Cascadia website or? They can. It's called Washington Evergreen. Um, we did one on the state of Oregon mm -hmm. a couple years ago. Um, and then the publisher who published the first one, it was actually, they pitched mm -hmm. the idea to us and uh, they liked how the Oregon one went. So they came back and said, how about doing one on Washington? Mm -hmm. And so that just, that just came out. It's on the Photo Cascadia website. 
uh, or you can just go to any online bookseller, I think, and find okay, it as well. Fantastic. Superb. So what we'll do, we'll put all your links in the description of this podcast, as well as we'll put that uh, the link to Photo Cascadia and those books as well. Awesome. Uh, thanks. In the, in the bottom there. And thanks very much for joining us today, yeah, Sean. Yeah. It's thanks, been fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks, yeah, thanks mate. Thank, Thank you, you, you so much for coming on. Thank, thanks for having me on, guys. It's been, been pure fun to chat thanks. with you for a while. <laughs> Great. It's flown by. <laughs> thanks so much, hey, Sean. Take care, mate. Cheers. Take bye. care. We'll see you. Yeah.